Okie dokie, guys. Uh, so, obviously, this is a huge series with huge implications. Um, in the last iteration of this matchup, we didn't read too much into it because it was just week one of competition, guys. And with all the changes that were coming in, teams coming off of breaks, yes, Gen G won two to one, but it was a little bit sloppy, you know. Maybe it wasn't the best series played. And so this is the highly anticipated rematch, probably a preview of the finals. And we've got two teams that have, you know, relatively de different styles. Like you can see the Zeri uh, ban coming in here because this is a champion that Gumiyoshi has never really been good at. Um, and we've seen Pays absolutely dominate on. A lot of Junji's play has been characterized by Maokai and Sejuani in the jungle position for Canyon, but he's been diversifying a little bit more recently. And then on this side, Faker has been dominant on Orianna. Remember, there is no Azir uh, on this patch, so that's been one of Faker's champions that he's not going to be able to fall back on. Same with Chovy, though. Chovy is a very famous Azir player himself. Now we're going to take the Ash and the Senna away to really prevent the bot lane from doing much. Now, this could mean, of course, a Varus first pick. Um, Varus has been a big priority. You know, double AD carries for T1, very popular in the bot lane. So it could be a Varus. That gives you a sense of where this series is going. Battle for the number one position. And, and not only in LCK, but arguably in the world, right? Um, whoever wins this series is going to be considered probably the best team in the world, considering that BLG has been tripped up recently by IG uh, in LPL. So we're going to see Lucian coming out immediately, and interestingly picked, countered by Aphelios. They're going to take the Rel. This has been another champion that has been picked up pretty consistently by Canyon in this on this team, in this new roster. Jace, okay. Yeah. Jace is a flex pick for T1, but obviously Zayas, the more famous Jace player compared to Faker. Faker has been pretty much on control mages throughout this entire split. Uh, might be taking Nico here. He's been playing Corky, obviously. Lulu Aphilios, very classic, very safe lane, farming lane in the bot side. Uh, it does show that Rel is going into the jungle position. They're going to ban the Vi, single target lockdown for Aphilios. Grog is going to be banned here just because it is a good matchup in the Jason top lane. No Nico. Okay, so we're going to see what Faker plays. No Talia for Chovy. Talia, a very powerful champion right now. They're going to take Asante, save their mid pick for counter. Uh, J4 into Aphilios. Again, very good single target lockdown in the back line, but you do have wild growth to prevent, you know, to provide some counter engage. And LeBlanc. I think this is Faker's first game of LeBlanc. This year, obviously historically an insane LeBlanc player. Uh, also remember with uh, Gen G that Cassante is a flex pick into the mid lane. So it was definitely something that they were considering putting into the mid lane. Probably not going to do it versus LeBlanc, and it will just be a quirky pickup instead. LeBlanc is interesting here. I'm, I am kind of surprised they didn't go like full poke comp with the quirky. Yeah, they do have, um, so to talk about this, they do have in T1 some advantages in the bot side. Like, obviously, they're going to get some pressure down early with Lucian Nami. They're hoping to get that uh, with the LeBlanc in the mid lane as well. I do love how they started doing the fan cheers while there haven't been fans in the arena. The the Jarvan pick is very specifically probably targeting the Aphilios for lockdown, but it's hard to actually burst. The problem is, is that it's hard to burst the Aphilios because you have kind of a poke composition and wild growth exists, right? So seems difficult. And you can't do anything to the Cassante because he can get out of Jarvan ults. Like, you can't gank him with Jarvan. Oh, he's just dead. That'll erase the CS difference and plate difference that has occurred in the top side. Very, very awkward grub trade. So they each have a grub apiece right now, and they're finally going to clear the first camp. Doesn't leave very long, though, to take the grubs next time after they respawn. 
I mean, Canyon's just torturing him in the top side, even though he has a ward. He's trying to get plates. Smite. He dodges Q. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is the nerfed. Uh, this is the nerf version of Cassante too, but I I still think it's strong when it's a flex pick on red side, because then you can get your preferred matchups. The TL double lift and Dodo drama. Look, I don't think Dodo's a good GM, guys, but like, it's it's that's some fucking double lift fantasy, man. Like, why would JoJo go to Team Liquid, guys, instead of Cloud9? Tell me, tell me why he would have gone. Why, why would JoJo rather play with Team Liquid's roster than Cloud9's roster? Tell me. Money? Okay. Core slash impact? I mean, Core has not looked good for a while now, guys. Plus, like, Blabber is going to have by far the bigger effect on his gameplay. I, I just think everybody's an idiot in that situation. I mean, Dodo fucking made the ter terrible TL Super Team. And now he just, like, uses, like, Harry and Yun and APA for years. Like, the GMing of that team is horrific. Yeah, and why why is Doublelift leaking this information? Like, what purpose does it serve? You know, you 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 want to stream, dude. You don't want to play LCS anymore. Like, stop. All right, very nice poke on Lehens here. It is dangerous for him not having wild growth right now in this fight. Yeah, they can't fight this when he has the package. Nice engage onto Guma, forces cleanse and flash. Or not flash, just cleanse and dash. Oh, oh God. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, the turret just kills Vager. So Zayus, Zayus just trades a top lane turret for this eventually. He just TPs top, seeing an opportunity to take the turret, at least to get something done, cross map for the trade. Chronicler just casually disrespecting Keen. Yeah, they cannot fight the front to back five, five versus five. Like they're trying to engage with the help of the Nami wave, but they don't even really hit anybody. So their call is, but what are you gonna do to this fucking Cassante man? Like he doesn't care if he's in Jarvan ult. Kenny just goes into it, tries to zone them out. I mean, they know they've lost this game. Nice bubble. Is 2024 Gen G better than 23 Gen G? Um, I mean, they're quite different. We're, we're waiting to see if they're actually better or not. The real test for Gen G is obviously going to come at international competition where they need to step up. I mean, they have, as soon as they get Ocean Soul, I mean, this game is super over. Just not enough damage on T1 side to deal with the Ocean Soul. He didn't have, even have a chance to ult. He doesn't even have a chance to ult. He comes through and he immediately just gets stun locked before he can ult. Man, Kenya has been so good on these engages this game, guys. Kenya has been f so fucking good on this realm. 
No deaths. It's over. No deaths. Twelve kills. Just one grub and two towers is the only thing that T1 did this game. I can't even remember the last time they lost a game without getting a single kill in it. T1. So crazy. Damn. Take the first win in excellent fashion. Oh. That was one-sided, guys. They got onanated. Damn. Well, disappointing game number one. Uh, Genji on red side again. They're going to take Ori out. And Zeri, so same band so far from both sides. This will be Ash. And no affiliates. Okay, so that dance changing. This should still be Ash, though. You don't want the bully lanes coming in from T1's bot side. Really surprised that they haven't actually gone for, like, Varus just dropping all the way through the draft. It's been a really key pick for, um, for T1. He did get a very slight nerf on his base attack damage on 14-4, but I wouldn't think that would... It's two, two attack damage base, so I think he's probably still fine. So they're going back to Lucian, so they're forcing them to do something else, but now we have Callista up, so it's not going to be Callista Nautilus that has been banned, so it could be Callista Rel in the bot side. It's going to be another flex pick uh, for Gen G. All right, so that that's going to be the poppy coming out. Already like this draft better. That's going to be effective into the Callista. Uh, Renata Glask strong in terms of team fighting, but still relatively weak Callista Renata when it comes to the laning phase. So rend dam base damage was nerfed on 14-4. So we'll see how this plays out. Figures look so by far as best on Ori. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, the Ori, the Ori is, it's not worth fucking with that on Faker right now. Koma drafting terrible. I think it's still Tom doing drafting, guys. Tom and, you know, Faker, obviously. Yeah, it's like they, by taking away the Gragas, now Aatrox has been blinded a bazillion times, and so far Zeus is undefeated on Aatrox this split. Interesting. It's probably top lane because that's what Keen has done previously. So a lot of the, um, a lot of the nerfs, to AD on stack deck um, happen on the next patch, 14-5. How much stock do you put in this win for Gen G? I mean, quite a bit. Like, it's, a, it's important that they win this series. I mean, I think this this draft looks very good um, for T1. Uh, so basically, you have the, you get the Talia through in the mid lane. Now, the combo of Talia and Poppy can really shut down Kalista and team fights. Because Poppy W and Talia E affect her ability to dash consistently. Also affects uh, Rel's ability to engage, right? If you see Renata ult coming, you can counter ult here with uh, Nami Wave. You should be winning the bot side. You have an aggressive early game uh, jungler. You get Tristana who can push twist to, Twisted Fate in in the top side. And Ari. Also, can be kind of hard to play into Poppy and Talia. Like, I, I think T1 is a very good draft in this game. I, I, I think this draft looks good for T1. I think they have really good answers to what Gen G drafted overall. You could still see flanks coming in from the Ari, obviously, too. But, I mean, there's a lot of counterplay available with Talia E and Poppy W into Ari Callista. Can I explain Gen G's last two picks? Uh, well, I don't think they expected Tristana top lane as a counter to Twisted Fate. I think they were trying to ban the Aatrox and the Gragas out and probably didn't know that Zayas was going to play uh, Tristana top. Now, Keen has played Tristana top this split, but Keen, Keen plays it in Dinar. I think T1's draft is, is quite good, though. Like, they should have pressure in all three lanes with this draft and lots of good gank potential with the Poppy early, especially Poppy into bot side. Like, Callista Renata should not... Be Rel should not be great in Dilution Nami Poppy. Steal this away early on. I don't know. Owner, uh oh, no, they are going to run into one another now. It's a very interesting start for Poppy to start Wolves and then head into bot side. That's a very unorthodox Poppy start from Owner. And Owner's just chasing him down. Didn't get this done though. He will win this fight and he will in a very long lane, quote unquote, that is the jungle. But Cannon is just going to get away here to the disengage cone. Level, yeah, I was Gume and Karia's first loss on Lucian Nami this split. Interesting pathing from Owner. You know, after he chases Rel out and he knows where Rel is, and he knows that Rel started his Raptors, he immediately goes to counter jungle enemy Raptors and, and topside. 
because he knows Rel is a blue and clearing out that quadrant. So a pretty good advantage gotten early on here by o by owner. It's a good, it's a very good read by owner. Also, you can cover topside, which allows Zayas just to push in with the Tristana. He he start he starts wolves and goes Raptors red, and that those three camps do not give you level three. So he actually can't stop Canyon uh, engage with uh, Poppy W. Sorry, he gets it off. He smites. Uh, he gets W off of the smite. Yikes. Cleanses off. On the ignite. Oh my god, even with the nerfed rend. Damn, great use of bailout. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! He just walked into the auto. So close though. So that was an attack range diff, guys. So Lucian's attack range, as I just looked it up, is 500, and Renata's is 550. And so I think Guma was just slightly out of range on the auto. It was just the attack range. It's a really good engage with bailout. And they thought that with Lanza's handshake, they would actually have it. And Guma's dad. Oh, yeah, he actually, he actually did Lanza's fuck up all. his auto. He, like, canceled his auto. And they thought that with Lanza's oh. handshake, they would actually have it. And Guma's dash in there is also because they're oh. or Lanza's oh, tank in the entire wave. But they would have traded on that one. Like, both autos would have been in the air. It's a bit of damage. Uh, any thoughts into potential weaknesses for Gen G? Yeah, I mean, their mid and late game macro is still not the best. Like, they excel more in the early game. Um, but, I mean, they're a very strong team. They're probably the best team in the world right now. And especially as we move into a meta where Zeri is very powerful again, it goes right back into Pays' wheelhouse. You know, the thing about Keen is he's just such a versatile top laner, too. Like, he just carries the water for this team. He can play anything, guys. It's fucking crazy. Keen, everybody's, like, fucking obsessed with Zayas, but Keen is the one who, you know, has very effective counterpicks, um, who can do any role that his team needs of him. Like, he is he is probably the, mo the single most versatile top laner in the world right now. That's why... Erudite League of Legends watchers like my Twitch subs prefer Keen to Zayas. Uh, right as I say that, uh, Zayas just kills him. <laughs> of course. He has cleanse, though. T1 looking to continue on this one. Zayus is going to hop away, and now Canyon in a really rough spot has to flash, but doesn't have any follow up in terms of good kills, so. though. Go well. It's a very nice charm. Ooh, beautiful charm. Seismic shove is going to be critical here from Faker as he's just going to get the flash. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on yeah, I'm a bit surprised at how Pays and Lehens yeah, are doing this game because I would have thought this would have been a weak point for Gen G. Because Pays and Lehens in lane have not been great this year. Especially if we consider Pays and Delight last year, like the laning, the laning skill really hasn't hasn't been there. Whereas obviously Guma, Guma and Carrie have been pretty dominant. So Genji has already been dominating the Drake this series. Now. They should probably just give this up with their bot lane at 50%, right? And Tristana being the first one to roam down. Bubble misses, though. And now they actually do not have a uh, wave to counter-engage the Callista or the 
Renata ult. So there's Renata ult. Has to be cleansed. Nice Callista ult in. Kenny doesn't actually get stunned either. He just gets knocked up. Eventually, Faker will be taken out. Joby still no ultimate. Thing is, Tristana's here. It's just the Tristana roam that really changes this scenario. Uh, that was a pretty good fight, though, for Gen G, considering the circumstances in which they started that engagement. But I would, I would not have fought that. You know, if Caria hits the bubble and doesn't waste uh, Tidal Wave, then I think this is a very different fight, a much more T1 favored. Like, because without having the Tidal Wave, now Lehens kind of just gets a free ulti off, which then forces Guma to use Flash. But you see why this comp is good, right? It's very hard for Pays to get consistent damage down with Unraveled Earth or uh, Steadfast Presence from uh, Talia or Poppy. Interesting, guys. Okay, so we talked about Rend being nerfed. And Callista's going Q Max now with opportunity. I mean, the, the opportunity stonks are generally up, and I I guess with with Q, if you're Q Maxing right, then you're chucking out the spears. So opportunity probably is a better item for that if you're out of con combat and then can hit a Q. I'm trying to understand this theory of this build. And I guess if you, it also has the passive where if you get a takedown, then you get bonus movement speed, which helps you in combat. Yes. Callista Q does have big base damage and massive scaling. Yes, I agree. Yeah, she won't be kiting that much because of Poppy and Talia. So I guess maybe, and it's also the nerfs to rend guys. So the Q max with opportunity. We'll just take a look at it and see how it goes. This is not... I guess just do this, but Guma gets in with the calling. He is going to kind of miss it as they go into the river. Here comes Jovi. So it's kind of weirdly like a more poke oriented Callista build. There you go. There's a big chunk of damage onto owner from Q. But very bad calling here. Into the river. Here comes Jovi. Owner shows up with Hex Flash into this engagement, but he's on a ward this whole time. And Bubble misses again. I mean, these are a lot of missed skill shots by T1's bot lane in this fight and the last fight. Nice charm. So we're both mid laners in the bot side right now, both mid laners with teleport up. By their respective knights, as we might have a fight for Harold here, Valdez. Yeah, kind of an interesting one. Zaves did pick up his first item, so maybe just trying to utilize the Tristana value, but the cleanse forced out already. And a knock away from owner, but the timing is totally just off. they trade Renata ult for Poppy ult right there. They get the flash at Akeem, but total control of the river right now does go towards Gen D, and Toby is not done with this yet. Rocks on cooldown at the moment for Faker, so. So he just gets to dash around and have some fun. And yeah, that's easily going to go into the hands of Gen G. With the health bars low, T1 might have preferred to back off and save their TP because both Chovy and Faker. In, in season three, he was also the strategic coach, draft coach. He wasn't the head coach. Carter was the head coach in the early days of T1. Oh, boo. to make a difference in this game and he's just gonna sling some rocks at Lehens no he gets away on uh, basically Lehens had to flash because Canyon that fucked up his herald charge purpose, right? this otherwise everybody would be back at the yeah. turret right now uh, uh, that was not on purpose, and Lehens could more safely walk up wall coming out here is Faker trying to make a play he wants to make a difference in this game and he's just gonna sling some rocks at Lehens. No, he gets away. Poppy, there isn't a lot of tankiness as Canyon might look for a steal. Oh, he gets the bubble after the gold card's already in the air. That's unfortunate. How many times do we have to see this? Carrier also isolated. Double eighty carry is gonna do a nice amount of damage to this, but it's all. This is the this is the classic T one, you know, Baron attempt at spawn. Little attempt of 
Gen Gita Aaron. is that T1 do pivot. Oh, they have very, they have a, they have a decently fast uh, because they have Zayas in the top side with the Tristana. They have a decently fast Baron here, but with Twisted Fate, it's very hard to do that. They do trade TP mid lane TP for mid lane TP though, and they get Twisted Fate ult out. It's a nice little try. Oh man, Keen with the fucking hero play. He knows Cleanse is down on Guma, guys, and he just comes in with the flank and flash gold cards him. That's so huge. Look at that. Ain't that a pretty little play? Straight into Lehens. Keen's the Keen's the goat, guys. We actually missed the entire Faker fight, but Faker was just charmed. We saw the end of the charm right there, and he just gets bopped. This series feels bad enough we might get trucks. I don't know. Like, I think T1's draft is perfect. I didn't like their draft in game number one, guys, but I think their draft is perfectly fine in this game. They just haven't been winning team fights. Right? That was a great flank by Keen. And they couldn't kill Canyon fast enough. Like, they couldn't pick Canyon off because he's playing Rel on it and it was super tanky with the Aftershock. Uh, they had opportunities, I think. You know, the the top was getting pushed in, like Zayas was doing well in the top lane. I think they had a lot of the answers, but again, the, the playmaking hasn't been super proactive from T1 side. And Kerry has missed a lot of bubbles. I mean, I think if he hits that bubble in the bot side in the skirmish around Drake, that might have been a very different fight as well. Oh my god, that fucking charm? Are you serious? Oh, guys. That was a fucking nuts charm. Holy shit. That is <laughs> the, the timing on that with how fast Talia's moving is so crazy. Yeah, I know he charmed him off the, a different wall earlier, guys, but like that charm. What the fuck, man? Look, that timing is so bonkers. Like he he times it just off of seeing the wall come down. I'd be so mad if I was take Faker. Wow. <laughs> All right, guys. Cleos. Cleos to, to Chovy for that play. All glory to Chovy. He wins the Cleos, guys. Now, he's done it a couple times this game, but that was the most impressive one. That was the most impressive one. It's like max range, perfectly timed. I, it's not a good engage by owner, guys. But it's kind of a desperation play. But look at the timing on that charm. Just from the seeing the wall go down. That is an absolutely beautiful play, guys. It's a desperation play by Faker, but just max range charm off the wall into the chain CC, forces the flash, gets the pick off onto Faker anyway. And then there you go. Follow it up with just another flash in the brush. That one's easy. Chovy, so good at Ari. One of his signature champions for sure. Oh, he's dead. Just more charms getting hit. It's fine. Is Faker's Talia pretty bad? No, I mean, he's had some good Talia games even recently, guys. 
it's desperation because they're so far behind. They're at a 10,000 gold deficit. Like, they have to make some kind of play to come in and try and get this game back. So, you know, it's not an ideal Talia play, that's for sure. But I don't think he's bad at the champion. Uh, if you had to say Chovy's three most iconic champs, would you say Azir, Yone, Ari? Uh, yeah, probably. Um, I think that's a pretty fair list. Uh, you know, other champions he's well known for are Tristana, Cassante mid. Um, those are pretty iconic for him. Silas. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'll call you Silas too, but he's not like the first player that comes to mind. He, obviously, he's very good at those champions, but in terms of like his most iconic champions, I think his split pushing with Azir is super iconic. His Yone is obviously very unique. Um, and his Ari play is sublime. Yeah, it's not about most played guys. It's about, you know, which do, which champions, like, is he super strong on, right? Or most define his play style. Yeah, wow, what a dominant series. Yeah, really impressive, guys. I was going to go back and check out the other uh, Faker wall charm. Uh, this is the first time we get to see the charm just to help keep Chovy alive. In this situation, he flashes out, so it's just a nice little play to prevent the engage and get him an exit. But it's that it's the second charm that's that really impressive one. 